as he got older, he became a more successful movie director, and he was less and less available to do, you know, the other projects. And, and I think it's got to be a hard to be an Academy Award-nominated director, and then some, someone wants you to go to that back to being a voiceover guy. So, uh, uh, and I started originally replacing him on uh, games and toys about 12 or 15 years ago, and because, um, you know, he just wasn't out of, out of the country half the time. And uh, then after episode three, they uh, they uh, just said, just use me for everything from that point on, because he, he just wasn't interested in doing it anymore. So. It's different, because, you know, usually in voiceover work, when you do animation stuff, you, you're trying to come up with something new and something different, you know. Um, completely not the case when it's something like uh, Yoda or Fred Flintstone or Tony the Tiger because it's someone else's voice and you know we're just caretaking it so I, I look at it as though it's someone else's property and I'm just watching it for a while so yeah I've been I've been very lucky that um, with only a very few exceptions they seem to have taken to my uh, my Yoda so I'm happy about that. very loyal they are appreciate it I do yes Actually, when I do games, because there's so much dialogue in a game, because you have to come up with every eventuality. Yoda would go, you know, north he went, then he would, south he went, northwest he went, southwest. So you have to do everything. This is great. I've never done like a Star Trek specific convention. When they first asked me, I thought, wait, are you sure you got the right guy? Because, but uh, they said no. They, they thought it'd be a hit here. So it's it, this is great because I'm you know I'm a Star Trek fan too. I must say, you know, I'm. I'm I'm, anything with spaceships, I'm good for it. So I, I worked with Bill Shatner years ago and on a show called Invasion Iowa, so I haven't seen him since then, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. But uh, I, you know, I brought some friends and my, uh, my daughters and her friends, and it's just fun to see them look around because to them, a lot, a lot of this is just alien, literally, to them. They don't know what, what this is about. So <laughs> Yeah, you would think that these, these two worlds collide, but, uh, you know, obviously there's a lot of crossover, you know, but I think the, the rivalry... Is half just for fun. Well, because it, like everybody loves all of it, you know. It's, there, there are some hardcore fans that will, you know, they've they've drawn the line, and you're in one camp or another. But that that's not so important to us anymore. Yes, the force will be with you always. It's actually, creator own comic book company like a Marvel or DC. We've got over 400 characters that we created. Uh, the, all the talent is local, local writers, local artists, uh, based in the Tulsa area, and uh, we've come together, put together our own comic book company, and. Uh, the very first book is out, and uh, it's Equinox number one. So working on some new stories and things like that to get out too as well. So hitting all the cons that we can. It obviously, is, is the fans trying to get the uh, the word out for, for our comic book company. Uh, but it's a it's a culture within itself. We know that. Uh, you know, you're uh, if you're not part of this culture, you're not used to that. Then you're the outsider. Probably either William Shatner or um, Adam West. I mean, because you know those those are the two names that has been around forever, and it was really cool to see him come out. Uh, you can see Adam West as well, so yeah, that's probably the biggest. But you know, all the all the hard to find merchandise. There's all a lot of great uh, comic books that you can get that you can't find anywhere else. Uh, toys that they've got here, so there's a lot of good opportunities for sale. It's been very well. I think we've got one book left. Uh, we've sold out uh, all the comics we've got. We might have a few at the uh, Wizards Asylum over on Sunny Person Mingo. But I did see some Cylons. I had the original Cylons from the from the early the, uh, early years, so that was a cool one. Borg. There was some Borg. I saw Princess Leia in a slave outfit. That's always fun to see her here again. I mean, there's so many fans that want to get out there and be a part of something. I mean, Darth Vader was here the other day. Obviously, he's not part of Star Trek. Uh, actually, we come up with the questions like, who would win, you know, the Rebellion or the Starfleet? You know, it'd be kind of cool. Or the Empire and the Starfleet would be kind of cool to find out. Man, I'm always having fun at this. It's, it's, it wears you out. You do a lot of work on it. But like I said, it, it's, it's a sight to see. You can get some good shots of some cool people, you know, uh, some, some of the actors are with, as well. Uh, it's always it's always a bonus. Funny, I came in through a different direction, actually. Uh, about 20 years ago, when I was 17, I started testing video games for George Lucas for his company, LucasArts. And I kind of worked my way through the ranks of that company. I started uh, yeah, testing video games, then I worked on the in the sound division, working on post-production sound work, like doing sound effects and recording and whatnot for the Star Wars films and the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. And on the side, I'd also acted. So I took those two disciplines together in my sound work and my acting, and I, I did voice acting. And so it opened up a lot of doors for me doing parts on Star Wars. So right now, I'm doing the post-production sound work on Clone Wars as well. Yeah. Do you know how many teenagers envy you? <laughs> I still, I still, you know, as I said, it's been 20 years, and I still, every time I drive into Skywalker Ranch in the morning, I still can't believe that I'm working there. It's, I was a huge Star Wars fan as a kid, so. Working on these films, let alone acting in them, has been a total dream for me. And 
I just uh, I can't believe it. And I'm a huge Star Trek fan too, so being here in Tulsa at this show and just watching William Shatner and seeing Michael Dorn up on stage and all that is fantastic for me to have things come full circle because I used to go to the conventions as a kid before any of this, so it's been fun. It's funny because we were casting that role and I was working on the show way before I knew who was going to be doing that role and uh, I put my voice in anonymously with another group of actors and so because I know George Lucas I didn't want him to feel biased in any way plus or minus with it so he actually picked my voice out of that group of 30 uh, and he kind of said you know it's a it's an evil guy he's yelling orders he's shouting he's a military guy uh, he's got a real bone to pick with the Jedi and he kind of George was kind of like thinking like like a Bella Lugosi type situation or, you know, like kind of like a so Eastern European thing. And I just got back from Prague on a vacation, so I went with it and I did this like Eastern European thing that's like, you know, activate the ray shields and prepare for attack. You yell a lot. You know, it's funny too, because the, the, the video games is where it really gets you because there's so many different ways and permutations of different adventures you can go on in a game. So you have to do 600, 800 lines for a video game. You have to get it all done in like five hours. So. That really does havoc on the voice, but you know, it's a minimal amount of discomfort for just a maximum amount of fun for me to be in this job. And I just, I love it. We're definitely at this show was seeing William Shatner. That was like, that was, that was amazing for me to be able to see that. Also just to meet other Trek fans and like, and talk about that. It's such a, it's a show that meant so much to me as a kid. So to be part of this as a guest has been like really fun. And, and also I just can't believe this location. Someone told me this is a high school gym that we're in. Man, the California school system, public school, has something to learn from this, because this is incredible. I cannot believe that the, the, this, this arena is amazing. There's some people that are dressed up as the Borg that look pretty good. Um, uh, you know, I've seen some stormtroopers. I've got some of the, the, the Vader's uh, 501st Legion here. Um, got some Jedi. Um, but definitely, I think the Borg take the cake for me today. <laughs> You're watching News at 6, and this is General Grievous. Goodbye, Jedi scum. <laughs> We're uh, searching for intelligent life with uh, medium to low results. Uh, we are enjoying ourselves and trying to figure out where the bar is. Came for security, actually. We're keeping everything secure here. And Denny Crane, uh, do you uh, do you have any uh, positions available for a young lawyer who works cheap? <laughs> Shatner said, "Peace be with you." <laughs> <laughs> he blew his own line. <laughs> Look for spectral anomalies, gaseous vapors. You know, maybe slay the occasional you know wannabe. Come on, guys, tell the real truth. If you guys just want to see Princess Leia in that slave outfit, don't hey, lie. Shut up, Logan. Hey, he's a married man. Uh, did you say the Princess Leia outfit? I think outfit? we did the Princess Leia yeah, outfit. Princess yeah. Leia. Yeah. <laughs> slave outfit. Hey, keep it G-rated, okay? Um, just checking out the show, checking out all the people that come out here. It's really cool. It's really neat. They need to do this more often. We just need to give them a hint about doing it during the wintertime. Yeah, that's winter months. It's too winter hot. Winter months. Yes. It's def definitely hot in the suit, you know. Uh, we're, we're big 80s fans, big... Um, Ghostbusters fans, you know, we're just, this is what we just do what we know, you know. You know, plus you see all kinds of people with these things. You're dressed, you know, I mean, Zap Brannigan. <laughs> the guy walking around dressed as Zap Brannigan, so, you know, if he can dress like that, we can do this. <laughs> it's, a, it's a long and forgotten genre, and one of the things from the 80s I think that really stood out was Ghostbusters, and you don't see many of that. We saw one other Ghostbuster in here, but it's received really well. People have a lot of fun, it makes everyone smile. I think that's what it's all about. And chicks dig the car. Yep, and they dig the chicks. Chicks, chicks, chicks dig the car. Chicks dig the car. <laughs>